We are covering BPM data forms in Kinetic today. So what are BPM data forms? Uh, they're a conditional form. They allow your users to interact with your BPMs, but only for method directives. They do not work on data directives. So what can they do? They can gather input from your users. They can display graphs and charts in Classic only. As far as I can tell with the Kinetic upgrade that came out in 2023-2, graphs and charts aren't yet able to be done. Um, and then they can show output that you might not want on the form. So BPM data forms can be found in the BPM data form designer and system management and business process management. So let me go ahead and start showing some of that. Okay, so here we are in Epicor. This is 2023-2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go into system management, business process management. And here we're going to see the BPM data form designer. There's actually a second way you can get to this and I'll show you other than just searching it, uh, but I'll show that in a minute. Okay, so this is your new BPM data form designer in Kinetic. Um, it's pretty simple. It's based on the App Studio like everything else in Kinetic is. If we want to make a new BPM data form, we're going to go up here and click new. Here we got to give a form ID. This has to be unique. So we'll call this uh, get cust name because that's what we're going to do. We can give it a title and call it customer name and the text. We'll just say this is a test form just so we can see it. So here at this point, when you're working in the BPM data form designer, you have to save after you get a form ID a form and a form title done before you can add your fields. After you save, you can now go down here and you can add all sorts of fields that they include here. So we have regular fields, combo fields, radio button fields, and the password field, uh, which I'll show the password field in a sec because that one's pretty nifty. We're gonna add a new field in here you're gonna see a bunch of different variables here. So we have BPM data character, and you have a bunch of them there. You have numbers, you have dates, checkboxes, short chars, which is just like character, just shorter. Um, and these are all the different types you can store your data in here. So we're gonna pick just character one, because we're gonna store the customer name is what we're gonna do. So we'll, so we'll give this a label of name. And we can leave the format the same. We don't need to make it mandatory, and we don't want a default value. In here, this order, uh, this one is the order that they will show on the screen so the higher the lower numbers will be higher up on the list since it's a and the kinetic version it's pre-placed you can't change it this is how you adjust where you want things on your on your kinetic one down here you have buttons we'll just leave the okay button but if you want to add another button you can just add it here and give it a label and then hooking up buttons i don't think there's a way to do much with them in kinetic yet in classic you could always do your classic customization to your code behind your buttons if you wanted a special functionality on your button okay so we made this bpm data form now this get customer name one so i'm going to go ahead and minimize this and now we're going to go ahead and go to our method directive maintenance because now we need to make a method directive that will use this BPM data form. So in here, I'm going to go ahead and I already have a group made to get there quicker. So I'm just going to go to my group. But here we're going to do it on the customer update. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a new pre-processing uh, method. Okay, and I'm going to go in my designer here. Okay, so in my designer here, in your callers, you're going to notice you have a call BPM data form here. And this is what we're going to use to call everything. So I'm going to put that on. I'm also going to grab one other one here. We have a set BPM data field widget we can use as well. And I'm going to use that to get data from my customer screen and put it into the BPM data form. So I'm going to make my connections. And in here, I'm going to set this first. So I'm going to set the specified field. And we want character one because that's what we use to the specified expression. And here, I'm going to go over here to my data set, my customer data set. And I'm just going to grab the customer name, then hit OK. So we are setting this BPM data character one field, which is a call context BPM data to save for all BPMs to access this. And we're going to save that from our data set uh, customer row name. And then we're going to say which BPM data form we want to load here, get custom name. And then here too, if you had a customized one, you could specify the customization, but that's only for classic versions. So I'm going to save, validate, no issues were found, we're good, close out of this. And then I'm gonna enable my BPM and save. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna move to my customer screen now. Okay, I'm gonna grab a customer and I will show this twice, once in this classic view and once in the kinetic view so you can see the difference. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna change something here so I can actually update and I'm gonna hit the save. And you hear this is the BPM data form we created. It grabbed the customer name. You can see here we have Dalton Manufacturing X. We have our OK cancel button. So we'll just close it and then the BPM will finish running, so we updated it. And so now I'm gonna open this up in the kinetic view and you can see the difference. You notice that the classic one looked like a classic form and that you could customize it in your customization window too with your developer mode on, uh, you'd be able to do that. 
in Kinetic though, let me go ahead and pull up Dalton here in the Kinetic view, and we'll make a change and update it. See this, now this is the Kinetic version. It's just this slide out from the side. And even if you go into App Studio, there is no way to edit this slide out currently, but you can adjust. If we had another one here, you can adjust the order with that order in your BPM data form properties there. So I'm gonna show another one that I made real quick. I'm gonna enable this one I made easier, and we'll go into Design Tech and show what this one is doing. So this one is just using, there was a base password BPM data form that I grabbed. I'm gonna load that with no customization again. And then this one, instead of doing it beforehand, I'm gonna do it afterwards because I did notice when I was working with this one, this password one will make you type in the user's password if you want to do whatever it is. We're gonna do it again on customer updates. Say maybe people are updating customer information poorly because they just accidentally save when they're looking at data or something like that. And we just want an extra layer on there. We could put this on there, and if you put the password wrong, it will block it from happening. It'll raise an exception. Um, but I did notice one thing about this one is that after you type it in, it holds that password data in that BPM password data field. So here I just have a set BPM field to just set it to null. So that way, every time the BPM form closes, it resets the password. So it doesn't keep that data there. So they have to type it in each time. So I'm gonna close out of this. I have it enabled now. I'm gonna make sure it's safe so it's enabled. I'm gonna go back to my customer screen. Okay, I'm gonna pull up my trusty Dalton and I'm gonna go ahead and try to change them now. And now you'll see I'm prompted for my password. So if I type the password in properly, well, if I, if I did do it, everything happens as regular. But if I were to try to do that again, and I type the incorrect password, it says password isn't correct, please retype your password and get brought back. So will not let me save this form until I type my password in. Okay, so here's some gotchas and good to knows. Uh, so classic only in 2023.1 or earlier, the Kinetic form is available in 2023.2. Uh, that Kinetic slide out cannot be modified and all that data is stored in the call context BPM data. Are there any questions about what I've covered? Uh, here's a question. Is there a limit to the number of short fields that can be used on a form? Yeah, uh, yes, there is a limit. Epic Core has a predetermined amount of them. I think it's like 10 per form. Um, and do be careful. One thing to mention about that is that is stored like across all BPM data forms. So an example would be like if you're going to use a BPM data form to gather input from a user and then you want to use a second BPM data form to show output later on in your process, make sure you're using different uh, the call of the call contest BPM datas of those because those are universal between both BPMs on the screen. And I think there's 10 per, so I think there's 10 characters, 10 numbers, 10 short chars, and 10 text boxes. Password would not work if you're SSO. Yeah, well, Glenn, that's right, yeah. If you're SSO, password would not work. That's only if you're in the standard Epicor logins. Uh, so the question was, what is call context? Call context is basically a keyword that Epicor uses for anything that is relevant to just the current screen you're on. So call context BPM data is data that is only relevant to the currently open screen, but it's shared between screens. That, that's kind of a weird way to explain it. Let me see if I can rephrase that in a little bit, a little way. So when you have like your sales order entry screen open, you have a call context and there's a couple of things in there. Uh, BPM data is one of them. There's also things like your current site, your current plant, things that are related to the current user and uh, the screen they're opening. So that call context BPM data is for that order entry screen. But if you're to close order entry and open up a job, let's say, that call context BPM data would be a new BPM data. It wouldn't transfer between screens. Want more Coda Bears Lunch and Learn? Check out our channel for more videos or contact us on our website for registration information.